everybody, my name is Alan Baby and you are at TrueIQ.com and today I'm going to begin to teach you how to walk. Before we do that, let's review what we've done so far. Tandoku Dosa number one taught us how to sit up and like so many other things related to Aiki, it's completely counterintuitive and backwards. So in order to sit up I fall down. I'm falling down in the back and like a circle it's rising up in the front. So falling down, falling down, falling down in the back, falling down, falling down, falling down in the front. So I'm not pushing, I'm falling to come up and down. Number two, same deal. This time I'm falling down on one side and uh, the other side is doing the opposite which on a horizontal realm and on the vertical and uh, so this is uh, Aiki 2 in Tandoku Dosa actually it's Aiki 3 in Tandoku Dosa number 2 so I'm going to fall down in the back it's gonna make me rise up and then I'm going to do this kind of a turn because the kind that I'm doing right now is where all of this is turning this way even though this hand is out. You can go the other way too but that's the way I'm going today so boom, boom, okay. Falling down in the back and turning. Number three same as number one, number two, and number three, I just continue. I just continue to fall down, which ends up bringing me forward, okay? Okay, that's what relates us to uh, our walking today. Now Tanoko Dosa number four, five, and six all include walking uh, and some hand motions. But uh, most people have to relearn how to walk, just like you had to relearn how to sit up, you had to relearn how to half stand, you had to relearn how to stand. Okay? And I find that one of the best ways of doing what we're about to do is to do something similar but different. Uh, and so what I suggest people do, most people aren't strong enough to do the full thing. Uh, so I separate the legs like this, have them lower their leg down as comfortable as they can go, and then we're gonna drop this leg, and then we're gonna drop this leg, okay? So you're dropping, you're falling. They walk, they tend to go over and down, over and down, over and down. So they get these, they create mountains to their valley. We want to start at valley level and go below sea level and then come back up again. Anyway, this can be quite challenging but it's quite educational. So I'm here, this is gonna turn completely here. When this falls, this turns here, okay? And if I were better, my head would stay even the whole time. And I'm noticing that I'm not picking this leg up quite as much as I should because it's wanting to whip around. Same thing on this side, 
it wants to whip around. It should be able to swing right under. All of that is so as work. Uh, falling down is easy. Pulling that leg up, turning your stomach to meet it. It's essential to make that happen. And so once you can do that, then you start to get the idea. My weight is going on a straight line. Another thing people tend to do, besides this lopey kind of a thing, is they tend to go this way, and this way, and this way, like this. We don't. And with this kind of an exercise, it really demonstrates that nicely. So, I'm gonna fall down. My stomach, believe it or not, is turned over as far as I can get this way. As soon as this starts to fall down, it starts switching sides. Okay, so now it's over as far as it can this way. This falls down and this switches over this way. All right. We're gonna be doing all that in the style of walking that I'm about to teach you. I strongly suggest that you work on this exercise first. Um, I, the idea for what I'm doing came to me uh, from an exercise that Dan Harden shared, uh, but I won't say that I'm doing that because I'm fairly sure that I'm, if I, if I were, I'm screwing it all up. But it inspired me to look at this and uh, um, also helping to teach people what to do kind of led me to this as well, all right? So next I'm gonna show you how traditionally we begin to teach uh, people how to walk uh, uh, in preparation for uh, Tandoku Dosa number four, five, and six. Okay, here we are again. And I have Tom Horton back with me today. He's going to be our um, model. And uh, uh, he suggested that I show you Tandoku Dosa number one, two, three on a line because that's the way we train it. <laughs> And, uh, um, and then we'll get to uh, number four in a similar fashion. So I'm going to go ahead and have Tom set himself up for whatever he wants to do. So hold down, look at us at number one. All right, for our walking, we usually start them out in an exercise that's uh, different than the Tandoku Dosa, but very strongly related. You'll notice that the lion is bisecting his feet at the bubbling well on both sides, and that's where uh, your feet should stay throughout the entire process. And, what he's going to do is he's going to take a step forward and um, it, unlike most people who rise up when he takes a step forward, he's going to uh, come up to a V position and he's, he's actually sinking down in his quad. His head stays level and then he steps out onto this foot again. It's a falling action and lets his weight shift so that it's 50-50 on the legs. Most people have a tendency, I do too, to put the weight towards the back. Consequently, I think that's why uh, some people suggest that you put more weight forward than back because what you'll probably end up with is your weight evenly distributed. 
Okay, and he can go ahead and take another V-step. And then out. Good. Okay, let's go back and start again. So here's the line. When he V-steps, his center will be slightly offline. And that's just the way we planned it. Also, when that foot comes up, you'll notice that he lifts up the toe slightly. Okay, because um, the idea here is, is you're not barefooted. You probably have Tabi on and you want to just kind of float across the ground there. Okay, and then out. Good, and it'll be up. And then out. Good, all right? And that alone is hard enough. And then the next thing we'd have him do is, uh, his turn. This is a whole big process unto itself. Uh, I'm going to teach you in two stages. This foot's going to stay put. This foot's going to turn on this foot. So it's equally turning this way and turning back this way. Super important. Okay. So what you'll notice if you do this is he's actually turning up here and maintaining the line of force down to the middle of his of his foot. Okay, and then he can open up the front foot in a similar fashion. Okay, and now he can walk back, V and out, V and out. Good, and turn. Good. Uh, and so what you saw him do there is um, uh, uh, more difficult. You see, he's turning both feet simultaneously so that at the end when he turned back and that means that he's turning both uh, of these simultaneously. And there's a couple ways of doing that. There's the right way and there's the wrong way. <laughs> the uh, wrong way is this kind of uh, floaty feeling where you're going I'm gonna fudge it and pretend like I'm turning on the center of the foot. The right way is where your weight stays there and you, it's like you're going to just tear the tatami like that. That's the right way because you're expressing force, yeah, and it's much more demanding. Um, you're expressing those dual forces on both sides and it turns back. Okay, so for this walking part, he just does that. Now let's get to his uh, hands. Um, normally I don't worry about that when I'm having them do that, but the next step is to take his hands and his middle finger goes into his guinal fold. And his, so now he has two fingers on his upper leg and two fingers on his lower uh, stomach, abdomen, okay, on both sides, all right? What should be happening right now is right now, the tissues in this leg should be fully turned this way. The tissues in this leg should be fully turned this way, even though it's pointing this direction. The tissues here are fully turned this way. As soon as he starts to sink, they're going to reverse. And the tissues are going to here, they're about center, okay? And as they come out, they're reversing and going this way. So this is now going this way. These are going this way, and this is going this way. All right, and do one more. Okay. And so he's all this way now, and then as he turns, you're going to get a 180 degree turn of the tissue again. Okay, and go ahead and step forward. And go ahead and step forward, and turn. So what I want to show you now is that um, this exercises uh, two different ways, which is kind of cool. I showed you in an earlier video. Can you go ahead and get a uh, regular, kind of relaxed, normal? So with the legs anchored here, he can turn this all the way, well, it doesn't matter, all the way over here, and this is turning, this is turning, and all the way over here, and this is turning, and this is turning. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it, come back to center, is that this stays here and both of his legs, unhinge his legs off the bottom. 
and you, this forces, this has to stay here, and both of these legs turn this way. That's all right. Go ahead. Yeah, and then the other way. Good, and the other way. Good, and the other way. Good, which is a great exercise, okay? This exercise that we're doing here, this walking, does both of those. So right now when he takes a step forward, he's doing what he just did. His stomach is staying put, essentially. It feels like it's cranking like crazy. His stomach is staying put and his legs are turning. And his stomach is staying put and his leg tissues are turning. On this one, the leg tissues turn. Uh, simultaneous. So you get both styles of that exercise in this one exercise. One, two, one, three, sink into You get tired? Yes. Okay. <laughs> right, relax. You can, uh, when we get tired, you can see uh, all our habits come out. So you have to um, strike a balance between pushing yourself and then if you push yourself and you're just screwing up, um, which everybody will get to eventually, uh, then you're just practicing uh, uh, failing and you don't want to do that. So, uh, so you have to make big calls on that. That's it for today. Um, we would work on that for long periods of time uh, before we get into the uh, next, next bit. Uh, what people I think kind of fail to understand is, is that, um, you know, like I, I've said on the blog, before we would ever get to a technique, before I ever touch a technique, uh, or at least when I'm teaching, uh, it would, this would be the same way. You're working on uh, basic, these basic movements, and you spend a long, long a long time uh, working those before you ever go on to anything further. Uh, and uh, um, and then even then, the first lesson, which maybe I'll show you someday, is, is that as soon as you're shown the next thing, everything that you've spent a year <laughs> practicing <laughs> goes out the window. And so that's kind of the lesson. It's like, oh, and by the way, you need to still continue to study what you had before because uh, if we throw any further stress at you, just of learning a technique, a movement or something, uh, that all goes away. So that's no good. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.